Hi, this is Jed Carr here with a battle report on my first game of Triumph and Treachery with three other players. Um, this game is pretty cool, it really confirms all the things I kind of assume about the game. You don't need to have an overpowered army to, uh, to do anything, there, there's too much randomness, too much things out of your control. And um, yeah, it, it's a bit longer than normal game, but uh, it's pretty cool. It's a bit of a headache to make a battle report and to track things, but uh, I'll try to recollect as much as I can and report it here. So in terms of my armies, we have the Axe, who is the Empire Skaven player. He's got 4 Demigriffs, 10 Knights, 10 Alberdiers with a Beast uh, with a level 2 and a Warrior Priest. And for Mercs, he's got 30 Clan Rats and a Hero. On his left, we have the Goblin Skaven player, who has the Hammer as a card to see who goes first. He's got Squeak Herders, I'm not sure how many, but a lot. Uh, goblins, a hero, a hero BSB, a shaman, two mangler squigs, and for mercs he's got a scaven engineer and two scaven cannons. On the left of the goblin player, which is on top of the screen there, is the high elf scaven player, definitely scaven uh, mercs of choice in this game. Uh, 20 swordsmen, 30 archers, one ball thrower, five scouts with a name shooty character, which I can't remember, but always hit on twos and as a, well, he does stupid amount of damage. He has strength 7, something like that. And for Mercs, he's got one Goblin Hero on a Caved Squeak. And my list, uh, I've decided to bring my Lizardmen. I took 25 Source Warriors with an All Blood, uh, 6 Cold One Riders with a Scarvet on a Cold One, 10 Skinks, and a level 2 Skin Priest of Beast. Turn 1. Uh, we draw the staff to, go, to see who goes first, and I am the staff, so there you go. Um, as you can see there, the High Elf Scouts are in my back, so what I decided to do is move my Old Blood out of the uh, Unit of Source Warrior. And then in Magic Phase, I cast Pan Impenetrable Pelt, Bubble, which gives all my character um, plus 3 toughness. So it's going to be hard to kill, even if he singles out the Old Blood. I then cast Ember Spear onto the Squig Order from the High Elves, which is represented there by the two knights uh, and fail to cast. Next uh, Empire starts and he decides to buff his cavern unit with lots of spells. So he's got uh, the plus 3 attack plus 3 strength spell from Beast, uh, some goodies. But then we <laughs> realize that because they are mercs and a lie of convenience he's not allowed to cast things on them. And unfortunately he also miscasts and gets a wound on his uh, wizard for his trouble. Goblin Skaven turns next, he moves his uh, Mangle Squakes forward. The Mangle Squakes are indeed at the uh, white dice box there. He uh, declares me as an enemy, so uses his cannon to shoot and only gets two casualties, which I'm very, very um, grateful for. I'm too far for his magic phase, and then it moves on to High Elves. The high elf player decides to move the mangler squig um, through the forest at the top of the screen there, closer to the uh, the goblin player cannon, uh, but declared me as an enemy, shoots his ball for it onto my colon rider and gets a wound through. Nobody likes the lizards, or they are in dire need of um, a new pair of leather boots, I don't know. The uh, High Elf Scouts with the name character decides to shoot at the Old Blood, even though he's got uh, Pan's Impenetrable Pelt. Um, the, the trick there, the surprise, is that he also has the uh, Sacred Helm of Ita, which gives him plus one toughness. So in total, he's got plus four for a total of nine toughness. He wounds me on sixes, but gets none, and that's the end of his turn. And we move on to turn two. The uh, High Elves get to go first. Uh, he charges his Mangler Squig and his unit of uh, skirmishers into the first um, Goblin Skaven cannon in, and then moves his um, scout units behind the hills towards the center of um, the table's edge, or the middle of the table's edge, sorry. In combat, as you can see there, his Mangler Squig and his uh, unit of skirmishers kill the first cannon or destroy it and over into the second one. The Empire player goes next, he decides to charge his uh, 4 Demigriff into the, the Squigger there, between the two Mangler Squigs, and can make it. 
and makes it, which is great. And then he moves his unit of knights uh, forward and moves his halberdiers forward a bit as well. In his magic phase, he gets Wisden Wild Form on a Demogriff, just to make sure, you never know. But um, as a result, gets another miscast. Uh, his wizard saves, I believe, but um, the, the Warrior Priest gets one. And would you believe it? Four Demogriff, they're not the uh, enhanced one, they're, they're the basic one, which I'm not sure what the difference is. I don't play Empire, sorry about that. But the four Demogriffs with Wisden Wild Forms fluff, uh, lose combat and break. So they run, they go through the Halbarius unit and end up in ruin there. Uh, they pass their dangerous terrain. Well done, some Mangle Squigs. Uh, Squigs, sorry. So then it's back to me. I... I think the, um, the scouts there seemed a bit of a good unit to attack. So what I do is I... I uh, reform my unit of uh, skinks with the skin priest and I move the old blood into the unit. I then cast the Ember Spear. I can only hit two of his models, but you know it's better than nothing. And um, and do that. Kills two kill two models, which is good. The coin there, as you can see, is a um, an objective. There's four of them, and if you get them at the end, you get 100 points addition. So it's quite important to have the to finish the game with the uh, one of your unit closest to that. Or one of your models. I then cast uh, Panzer Penetral Pelt on my guys, get the um, the buff on the toughness as well. So having had the uh, High Elves as enemy, um, I think there's I need to uh, to control the Empire's Cavern player just in case he decides to change his mind and attack me. Given that his Demigriff are very close now, although they are they broke in, in their in their turn previously. So I move my Scavet on the call one there to redirect or tank uh, the unit of clan rats and I move my colon riders forward to get a bit more of the action. The idea there is potentially next turn uh, declare the Empire as my enemy, charge the Demigriff on the flank or maybe he's a uh, halberdiers. The Goblin player is in bad shape um, so the combat with the cannon and the mangler from the high of player and the uh, high of player skirmish unit ends up uh, as expected the cannon uh, is destroyed which means that the uh, high of player uh, reforms his unit and face the uh, the mangler's quakes unfortunately he did not uh, plan for that he, he had to face either the halberdiers or the high elf mangler's quakes so he decided to keep his uh, his uh, unit of Mangler's Quick facing the Halberdiers, which in hindsight, 2020, he was a bad move. Turn 3, the High Elf player declares the Goblins his enemy, of course, charges the Mangler's Quick in the back, so in contact with the Squig handlers, which is a bad move, bad, uh, bad news for the Squig. Really. As expected, the Mangler's Quick wins the combat, uh, but the uh, Goblins are steadfast and they stick. The Empire player decides to attack me, oh dear, I guess uh, didn't want to uh, fail against the Goblin again, uh, charges his clan rat into my Scarlet on the Cold One. I then realize, oh big mistake, that uh, the Scarlet on the Cold One is my BSB. So I get the BSB there, uh, stuck in a combat against a large unit of clan rats, which most likely not going to get away from for a while, so, or probably even get killed. So. Very, very bad player of mine. I should know my list better. However, as uh, Scarvets on Core Ones are, he uh, he kills four uh, clan rats uh, with the Core One, gets no wounds in return, and uh, but loses combat because of the um, the ranks and the charge. So I think, oh, I think, I think he won combat by musician. So we had a draw, and I lose, but I stick, and that's it. The Goblin player is already in combat with the High Elf player, so has to choose the High Elf player as the enemy. Decides to move his Engineer character, who is behind the hut there, uh, just between his fingers, and the Mangler's Quig into the, um, the High Elf Mangler's Quig. Unfortunately, the Engineer Oh, in the combat is in the 
uh, benefit of the high elves, the engineer breaks, he breaks and goes through his own Mangler's Quig, or well, his main army Mangler's Quig, which is unfortunate. So Mangler's Quig dies, his engineer dies, and the high elf still um, is in contact or is in combat with the, the Squig herd there. I think all, more, all the handlers are dead, or all but one. On my turn, I move my Cold One Riders uh, closer to the combat with the um, the Clan Rats, and what do I do? Oh yeah, and I move my Skink units back into the combat, trying to provide some support uh, with spells from the Skinks and probably, probably the All Blood uh, to the rest of my units. I also reform my Source Warriors in a 5x5 formation, or 5x4 formation, as you can see there. In my magic phase, I cast irresistibly uh, Pan's Impenetrable Pelt. I get a big miscast. The, the priest is okay, but I kill five of my own guys. In combat, the Scarlet carries on. Uh, this time, I think he loses by one and, and holds. Uh, loses because of the, the ranks again. Bloody scab. The high half player who has to declare the goblin player as the enemy, as he is in combat with him, uh, circles around his unit of skirmishers, uh, archers, the, to be on the flank of the goblin unit, and the big uh, black block of goblins. And of course, inevitably, the um, goblin uh, squig herd uh, fails to destroy the mangler squig. They break, they explode, or they die, uh, cause a couple of wounds onto the Mangler Squig, but that's about it. Oh yeah, and causes a lot of wounds onto the Goblin unit, which is unfortunate. It's definitely not going well for our Goblin friend. And unfortunately, running out of options, our Goblin friend decides to engage with the High Elf player again, charges his Goblins into the Mangler Squig. And in combat, the Goblins at last uh, beat the Mangler Squig. They beat the Mangler Squig, they lost about what, 14 uh, goblins in the process, but they beat the Mangler Squig, who flees, and the goblin cannot catch them. Turn 3, the Empire player decides to face both his uh, unit of Demigriff and the Halberdiers, or towards my, uh, my army, basically. He moves his uh, unit of knights a bit closer, and decides to buff his unit of Halberdiers, oh, and his Demigriff gives them a Wissen Wild form. In combat, the uh, the clan rats stick. I think uh, yeah, I lose combat again. I know, I remember I lose combat because I did not get the uh, the extra card or the extra coins, the 50 coins that you get when you win combat. So I kept feeding the 50 coins onto my uh, Skaven friend there. But um, yeah, the scarlet is unscathed and uh, slowly but surely is uh, removing models from that unit of clan rats. And here a bit of an incident, um, one of my uh, opponents, yeah, yeah, I'm blaming them, it's not me, uh, decided to, uh, to fart, I guess there was too much pizza uh, digestion going on, uh, which completely destabilized me, I get confused and I, I missed uh, an opponent's turn and uh, you will see that, that opponent's turn on actions make it that my Scarlet and the unit of Clan Rats have to separate by one inch because they are... Uh, I guess the the Empire player was in fight in combat with something else, or I get targeted. Anyway, sorry about that. Uh, we won't know what happens in there, but we'll see what's the aftermath. And so the aftermath is: uh, I play next, um, and I've got the option to charge the Albadiers or the Demigrave, and maybe get flank charged next turn by. Uh, either of them, which is not something I'm looking forward. So, what I decide to do is um, put my Cold One Riders in front of the Clan Rats in such a way that it's going to be very hard, if not impossible, for the Halberdiers or the Demi Demigriff to charge them, uh, and then put the Scarlet there on the back to get the flank later on onto that Clan Rat unit. I didn't do anything with my Source Warriors, I maybe should have. And I forgot to mention, I declared the high elf as my opponent, so what I did with my skin unit is I turned them around with the old blood in there, my general, 
uh, and I cast Ember Spear, I get two more uh, uh, casualties out of the scouts, which leaves the main character and one guy in the unit. They stick, however, they pass the leadership test. On to Empire. So Empire turn 4, uh, he charges Demigriff into my source wires and makes it. He then charges the um, Clan Rats unit into my Colborn Riders and makes it. Wisson Wildform gets through onto the Demigriff, which is a bit of a drag for my source wires. However, in combat, he um, kills about 5 of my source wires. I don't cause anything, but I am steadfast and I stick with three dice and my cold ones um, I think it does nothing I, I do a few wounds but we stick basically and we're stuck in combat and at the end of the turn which then goes to my my turn of uh, turn five um, I charge my scarlet into the flank of uh, the clan rats uh, what do I do then? Oh yeah, I try to uh, get my old blood closer. No, no, I didn't. Anyway, Empire is my enemy, and this is what happened. I destroy the clan rats. However, I lose two uh, Cold One Riders in the process. We overrun with both my clan rats, uh, my <laughs> Cold One Riders, and the Scarlet, but do not catch him. We do get a wound or a couple of wounds onto the, the Demigriff. He kills, I think, a few more, but uh, my source wire stick. The goblin player reforms his uh, goblin in such a way that it's going to be very hard for the knights or the high elf to charge him uh, because he hides himself behind her. And last goes the High Elf player. He moves his Source Master forward. Uh, I believe he declares me as his enemy and tries to shoot my uh, characters, but gets to nothing. I apologize, only one picture for my uh, turn 6. I uh, charge the Old Blood out of the unit of Skink into the flank of the Demigriff, and with all his attacks, uh, he's got extra additional hand weapon. Uh, predatory fighters, pretty neat on, to do the trick there. We kill or destroy the um, or break. I forgot. Well, probably break because I overrun there. So we break the demigriff. I overrun with my uh, old blood, and just one inch short of the tower. My source wires uh, overrun into the depleted halberdiers over there. there. Also move the uh, core one riders closer to the action. On his turn, the high elf player decides to charge the rear of my source wire and why not at the end of shooting combat and everything he uh, almost destroyed my unit of skink completely eradicated the uh, source wires and um, I, I still have my two uh, my bsb and my uh, general and i forgot that his uh, name character and his remaining uh, unit plus the archers plus the bolt thrower uh, completely destroy the skink unit and skink priest. Oh, and I forgot to mention the Mangler's Quake from the High Elf player uh, succeeded his, um, his rally check but I used a card to make him fail so he got uh, broken even further and just top uh, an eighth of a, an inch shy of the table's edge. The Empire player Declares the goblin player as his enemy, charges on the, on the corner of the unit. He could just clip one of his knights. Um, I don't remember what happened in the combat, but both units stick at the end. The goblin player, uh, time to shine, he uh, goes straight to combat, uh, wins the combat versus the Empire's knight, and breaks the unit. Unfortunately, do not run them down. And I believe this is the end of the game. I've got a couple of pictures after, but uh, it doesn't make sense. So, yeah. End of Triumphant Treasury. First game. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. I mean, it's great. Um, you can play anything you want. You can get things off the shelf that you never play usually because you never know. It could shine in there. Um, the, the cards and the special events that you can use are screwing your opponents or your ally. You know, alike. Depending on who is your like that turn 
pretty cool. Um, in hindsight, on my playstyle, I should have finished that unit of uh, high of skirmishers with the name character. It would have allowed me to get another token. In the end, I get uh, two uh, objectives. Um, the high elf players had three or two, but he won so many combats, and I, I fed the Empire player with my scarlet for so long that uh, I lost. But uh, yeah, it would have been a close game if I got his uh, his unit of uh, skirmishers plus the the name character. So hopefully I'll be able to do another battle report. I know how the game works now, so I'll try to get more relevant shots next time. Um, and yeah, <laughs> great game. Uh, can't wait to try it again. Uh, hope if you have the opportunity to try it that you do. I definitely recommend it. And uh, if you have any query or you think something was wrong in our way of playing the Triumphant Treachery game, please comment below. Thank you very much. For the scores, the High of Skaven player got 1510 points. Uh, I was second with 1050 points. The Empire of Skaven player was third and the Goblins player was fourth.